It says here, uh, one of the slides says, depending on the type of entity, each oddity, oddity. <laughs> you are an oddity. <laughs> <laughs> You're listening to the Help Me With HIPAA podcast, where HIPAA and humor collide to make learning fun. Your delightful hosts are Donna Grindle and David Sims. Relax. HIPAA help is on the way. Welcome to the Help Me With HIPAA podcast. My name is David Sims from HIPAA for MSPs. Dot com. <laughs> Joining me as always is Donna Grindle of Card and Compliance. Dot com. <laughs> oh, We're starting with that. <laughs> Another dot oh, com episode. Dot com. Yeah. You know, well, today's we're going to dive into the OCR desktop audit details because on July 13th, there were some covered entities that were invited to a webinar where the OCR staff walked through the process that they can expect to uh, endure. <laughs> when, when there's an audit and uh, the expectations for their participation. So I thought this would be an awesome time for you <laughs> <laughs> to uh, convey the information for those of us who missed it. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah. Well, this was the webinar uh, that OCR hosted was for the covered entities that have been notified that they are in that Elite group. Of Congratulations. Da, 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 <laughs> who, you have been selected. <laughs> uh, an elite group of people uh, that are selected for this, and it was to address the process and explain what some of the things meant and as well as to take questions. And um, there was a lot of interesting stuff in there, and we thought that it would be a good time to let everyone uh, hear or learn from uh, the best that we've got <laughs> about what was actually involved and the kinds of things that they were saying in these audits. Because while this is the first round of desktop audits, just because you weren't selected here, don't think you're good to go. Because mm -hmm. they've made it clear on two things. Number one is they're getting the business associate list from these covered entities, and then they will select business associates to audit. So these kinds of questions could be presented to you, BAs. And then they're also doing on-site audits, which may or may not include the people in this list. So you could get picked for an on-site audit if you're lucky enough to be picked for it and a desk audit is possible, but they're not saying you are out of the running for a desk audit just because you didn't get, or for an on-site audit just because you didn't get a desk audit. And then, of course, this program will continue. And what they learn from here, they will keep fine-tuning because now it's an ongoing audit program. So it's a good idea to at least know how much trouble you'd be in. <laughs> <laughs> so that you can try to tell people uh, what had happened was. So you can't say you didn't know. That's basically what they're. Yeah, I know. Really, <laughs> it's, it's, what it's, they're doing. Uh, it's it's all out there. If you're selected, and they'll let you, you know, ask these questions. But they're publishing this so that the next time through, most of the questions should be already answered. And I'm sure there's some interesting questions posted. Well, there's interesting questions as well as interesting direction from OCR. And, you know, normally we take our notes and we just go through our notes. But these things are so long and done in teeny nice little print that it became easier so that we didn't overstimulate David with the show notes. <laughs> uh, <laughs> it became easier to just... We hit some FAQs, but then I'm going to read specific information from the um, request, the audit request itself, as well as the ask questions. And the, they even give you the slide deck that was used in the presentation. So we've got a variety of things. We're going to kind of pull those in and talk about what they mean and talk about what it means to the people that we work with and what we know about what they're doing. And I, I can assure you that, you know, even in our world, there's things that will be changing because of the information that's in here. And it's just that we've never had this level of guidance before of exactly what they want to see. So 
What do you think, David? Can you I think hang with me on we this? We can do it. I, I, I can do it. So You can do yeah. it, yeah. You're going to stick so, with So it. the first thing that I would do if it were me and I was the winner of this audit, <laughs> probably email it back to them and say, no, thank you. I'm good. <laughs> <laughs> I appreciate it. <laughs> I appreciate the, the opportunity, but I'm really too busy for this right now. <laughs> <laughs> well, <laughs> what a nice guy. <laughs> I don't think that that would work. So, no, but yeah, I, you uh, know, I'm sure somebody said, can we just say not can right Can we defer now? this yeah. to maybe never? Can, can you do this next time? <laughs> yeah, thank you. Really thank you, time. but no thanks. <laughs> but <laughs> so first of all, you know, we did cover a little bit about what the program would involve in a previous episode. And in there, they, they had told everybody from the get go that they, you know, we're going to send out these emails So you better make sure somebody's looking at the email that we have. And there's no, you know, if you feel like we don't have proper contact information for you, go ahead and call us to make sure because we're not going to say, sorry, you know, I didn't get it is not an acceptable reason for not doing it. And they said, okay, you're going to get this email and it's going to have two separate requests that you have to meet. One is a list of policies, procedures, and documentation they want to see. And then the other is a list of all of your BAs. Right there, the BA listing has to be, it's electronic, and it's basically a spreadsheet is what they want. And they want it to be sent back to OCR within 10 business days. Okay? Mm -hmm. Boom. And then everything, everything, now they have that, the reason all this was delayed is that online portal where you're given your own space uh, in the cloud to upload all of this stuff electronically. So they they told us that from the beginning. They said, this is what you're going to get. And uh, then they said, uh, here it is. <laughs> <laughs> and people went, what? And so there's some very interesting points that they've made in the presentation and then later in the questions that <laughs> you could tell people were trying different approaches, we'll say, to addressing this. So it says here, uh, one of the slides says, depending on the type of entity, each auditee, auditee. <laughs> you are an auditee. <laughs> <laughs> uh, stranger than most. Is expected to... And then here's the list. Provide only the policies and procedures that are relevant to the controls requested. Um, CEs must extract the relevant language from larger compendiums of policies and procedures if needed. Whoa. Yeah, I know. I got to say compendium. (laughs) Um, But (laughs) So the thing I'd like to say about this is often we tell people, okay, well, if you want to have it in one big document, you can, but it's kind of hard to be able to associate one giant document so you know what areas you're covering and then later be able to audit it. So it is kind of hard to do that. And they're saying, if that's what you're doing, we want you to pull out just the section that relates to what we're asking about. So make note of that in the way you're managing your policies and procedures because you're going to be asked, I need to know what you're doing with 164.314A2. And you got to go find just that piece. So that's point number one. Only what's relevant. Don't try to baffle them with BS (laughs) (laughs) uh, or overwhelm them because that's not going to make them happy. The second thing is it's the auditee's responsibility to provide clear, complete, and responsive documentation to OCR. So don't try to tell us you figure it out. Let me just dump a whole bunch of stuff on you, and you figure it out. It's mm-hmm. your responsibility to give it to us. So I, you and I both know there's plenty of people, you know, your hippa schmippa guy <laughs> might say here, you know, I, I disagree with even having to do this. And then the third is, and, you know, I, I, this one I really loved. Entities will not receive, quote, Credit, and it's actually in little quotes, and if you could see me right now, I'm doing little air quotes, and (laughs) for a later document submission, 
if a CE, and this is in bold, if a CE does not have the requested documentation, it must submit an explanation for the deficiency in its response. I ain't got it. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. HIPAA schmipa. That's what they should put on there. HIPAA schmipa. Uh, that's what our doctor said. HIPAA schmipa. We don't have it. But uh, <laughs> the point here is, first of all, people are asking, can we get credit if we give it to you later? Which also means we don't have it done. We're going to try to do it. We can't get it done in this short time frame you're giving us to get it done. So can we give it to you past that time? No. You're supposed to already have this. Mm -hmm. And they made that pretty clear. And if you don't have it, don't just skip it. That's the part everybody does. Well, just don't put that in there and don't say anything about it. You know, it's like, okay, I got a test and I'm going to skip this whole section, but I'm going to make it look like that page just got lost in in my test. <laughs> Nobody will notice. Nobody will notice. Nobody will notice. <laughs> <laughs> so, it, you know, right there, you've got uh, some pretty clear things about the people that we know and have spoken to. And, you know, granted, there's plenty of people that are doing this and can do it. And again, they're not looking for you to be perfect. But, there are so many cases that we've worked with that couldn't do this right now. And then they made it easy. They made it easy. They said in the desk audit, they took the audit protocol, which we talked about, and how detailed it is. And they said, <laughs> you know, that's the one where it's 180 line items, but then you look and each line item has maybe six things on it. Mm-hmm. You know, it, it's huge. And uh, and I did a scan of it, by the way, and 142 times it mentions the word documentation. <laughs> so I'm just saying. So I, I would ask you, David, what do we say about documentation? If you don't document it, it didn't happen. That's right. So we can't stress that enough because that's what they're asking for. So they said under, we're only going to ask you about these things. So notice of privacy practices and content requirements. So that's 164, 520, A1, and B1. See what I mean? Mm -hmm. Provision of notice, electronic copies of the NPP, which I can tell you there are plenty of times that I go, because you know I look, I go to the website of any group, and they still have the 2003 notice on their website. (laughs) And uh, nobody's updated it. And they'll say, well, we have it updated. You know, that one's supposed to be updated too. So (laughs) You need to do the update of your update. Yeah. (laughs) Update your update. Remember everywhere it's at and replace it. That's a key piece. So that mentions, tell me everything about 164, 520, C3. But then we get to the last privacy piece, which we did a whole discussion on the changes in the privacy rule having to do the guidance on rights to patient right to access. Mm -hmm. They're hitting that one hard. So they're saying privacy rule controls that relate to right to access, 164, 524, A1, B1, B2, C2, C3, C4, D1, D3. (laughs) So what I'm really hearing is this, uh, all this paperwork better be in electronic format so you can do some searching. (laughs) Mm Mm-hmm. Well, that's that's the whole thing about putting it in one giant document. Now I've got to go find all of those. And, and we really encourage people to associate it with the law because that's what they're going to ask you for. Mm-hmm. So that's what they're going to ask for. That's what they've asked them for. Not going to. They have asked them for in the privacy rule. And we'll, we'll get into a little bit of that as far as it's very specific questions that it said. And then they have... Breach notification control, so we want to see all your documentation about timeliness of notification, which is, you know, the 60 days and the year and all of that, and then content of notification. So one of the things we run into is when we're saying you have to have these policies and procedures and a breach response plan in place and all of this, we tell people you need to have like a template, a a, a letter, and they're like, well, we'll get that whenever it happens. <laughs> <laughs> Problem with that is the law says certain things are supposed to be in there. And how are you going to make sure that you have all those in there if you don't have a list of an example of what that would entail? So mm-hmm. they're saying 164-404-C1 is where we want to know what you've got there. 
And then, so that's that's good. We, you know, it's breach notification, and also, hopefully that one's pretty straightforward. All those specifics, and a lot of people don't have it. They they think it's enough to just say our breach notification policy says we're going to do what the law says. Hmm. Gonna need something else. Got a procedure. Got a plan. No. <laughs> All right. So then we get to security. Now the good news is they only ask for two things. The bad news is. <laughs> the two th- what they ask for. <laughs> the, the two things they ask for are huge. <laughs> it's basically the guiding factor. So you know it's the risk analysis and then the risk man- associated risk management plan. So 164-308-A12A, 164-308-A12B. Mm-hmm. But those are huge. And yeah. so they're like, okay, now we're gonna ask you for those things. You're going to put them in the the portal we've given you. We're going to check it out, and we're going to do a draft of our findings, and you can respond. We're going to show you what the draft says, and you can do a written response that we will include in our final report. doesn't mean that if you come back with a written response to our audit, if we see problems and you try to say, you know, whatever, is the reason you couldn't do these things or it's misunderstood. They didn't say they're going to change it, their findings. They're just going to include your written response in the final report. Note to self. (laughs) (laughs) Under OCR's separate broad authority to open compliance reviews, OCR could decide to open a separate compliance review in a circumstance where significant threats to the privacy and security of PHI are revealed through the audit. Hello. Mm -hmm. You know, they (laughs) say real nice, we're not going to fine you just because of the audit. However, (laughs) we could decide we're going to investigate you where we can fine you. So, you know, they're making it clear what they're going to do and what they're saying. So, that in itself should be enough to get you going and reviewing your documentation. But just in case, just in case that hasn't gotten you motivated, I thought we would <laughs> we would go through just the description of what do you want to do? The right to access, or should we do the security rule stuff? I like the security rule stuff. Yeah, I know. <laughs> you know. Well, the right to access, we did do a whole uh, session on it, and it covers those specific things and. And so the things they're asking you for in that right to access your policies, and it starts with obtain and review policies and procedures in place for individuals to request and obtain access to PHI and to determine whether they comply with the mandated criteria. That's the first sentence. Wow. Okay. So that's what you're supposed to do. And then they have... Upload policies and procedures for individuals to request their PHI. Upload all documentation related to the first five access requests, which were granted and evidence of fulfillment in the previous calendar year, removing PHI if possible. So you got to show me where you did this. Somebody asked for it, and here's what we did. You got to show me five of them. Hmm. That's going to come into play in just a second about five (laughs) other things. (laughs) <laughs> and then, so you got to do the first five, and I want you to do the last five. And then any standard template or form letter that you're using to document the request. Okay? That's, that's <laughs> part of what you're supposed to do. So, like, recently I had to request some records. Uh-huh. <laughs> and the, the front desk nurse lady, thing, she handed me a post-it note and said, write down your name and... uh and date of birth. And <laughs> she disappeared and came back with the documents. <laughs> and clearly she's documented that they did that. Uh, I can see so. I can see that post-it note in the HIPAA <laughs> three ring binder right now. So, so what I'm saying is, do they need to scan the post-it note into the <laughs> documentation? <laughs> That's something. And, you gotta prove and, you did five. Yeah. And I mean this was a um this was a very large hospital entity. <laughs> yeah. I'll just leave it at that. Yeah. So you got to give me the first five you did, which, you know, that in itself is, 
Yeah, and there's Q and A about it and stuff about how do, how do you know? And then the most the five recent that you've done. So you they shouldn't be in last two months that you've done this. So it's kind of interesting. So you wouldn't call up people and be like, "Come in here and request a copy of your record so I can document this." <laughs> yeah. I need you to write down this and sign it for four years ago, please. Um, so, <laughs> <laughs> not a bad idea. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so then, uh, then we're, we're, that's uh, access uh, stuff, and and there's a lot more to it, but we hit a few of them. Uh, let's look at security management because again, these these are huge. Even though it's uh, just you know two entries on the list of things we're going to ask for, so. <laughs> Does the entity have policies and procedures in place to conduct an accurate and thorough assessment of the potential risk and vulnerabilities to the confidentiality, integrity, and availability of the electronic protected health information, EPHI, it creates, receives, maintains, or transmits? Yep. (sighs) Upload the policy regarding this policy and procedure. So how is it that we go about doing it? And has the entity conducted an accurate and thorough assessment of the potential risk and vulnerabilities to the CIA of the PHI it cremates. And then it says, consistent with this, upload documentation demonstrating that policies and procedures related to the implementation of this implementation specification were in place and enforced Six years prior to the date of receipt of notification. Mm. So I need you to show me that you have done a risk analysis six years ago and that it's been enforced. Okay. Yeah. I'm hearing some people going down in flames. (laughs) I bet you some people would just turn this podcast off. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> yeah i can't That's listen like, anymore no 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 <laughs> no no no, no. <laughs> la, 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 la. <laughs> and then determine how the entity has implemented the requirements uh crickets um consistent with 164 b 2 ii through iii upload documentation from the previous calendar year so 2015 demonstrating the documentation related to the implementation of this implementation specification whew, is available to the persons responsible for implementing this implementation specification and that such documentation is periodically reviewed and, if needed, updated. So what that says is documentation, documentation, mm-hmm. documentation. <laughs> So basically, though, you're trying to make sure, and, and I know this has happened to you, when, when we go in, and, and it happens a lot in the smaller offices. You go in and you say, do you do a risk analysis? So yeah, well, we had somebody do one. Uh, last, last, oh, when was that? Do you know? Uh, okay. Uh, we started on one. <laughs> yeah. Can you give it to me? <clears throat> yeah, let me give it. I got to find it. Just Oh, oh here it is. Uh, wait, no, it's in somebody else's office. I'll be right back. And then they come in with a a sweet little notebook that is, you know, cryptic. (laughs) No, it's it's you know, it's a nice binder with pages in it. And you open it up and you say, okay, um, this says you were going to do X, Y, and Z. It does really. (laughs) So first of all, I'm supposed to show from the previous calendar year documentation that this has been done, and. They're not even sure when it was done. And and I'm not saying that, you know, they're evil people. It's just they are not given the resources to be able to do this. And most times they don't even understand what some of this stuff means. You know, some of it I have to read two or three times to go, wait, what? <laughs> mm-hmm. So it's the obtain and review the written risk analysis or other records that documents that an accurate and thorough assessment of the risk and vulnerabilities, blah, 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 and you just glaze over. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) And evaluate and determine whether the risk analysis or other documentation it contains. Now, here you go. A defined scope that identifies all of its systems that create, transmit, maintain, yeah, they got it wrong, create, 
transmit, maintain, or transmit is what it says, but we know that's uh, create, <laughs> receive, got to be in there yeah. somewhere. <laughs> so there's a typo, OCR, just telling you. Evaluate and determine whether the risk analysis or the documentation contains. Okay, so here we go. Could I, yep, it's wrong. Details of identified threats and vulnerabilities. Assessment of current security measures. Impact and likelihood analysis. And a risk rating. Hmm. Mm-hmm. Is, Should already have that. Yeah. But how many times do you see where somebody just ran a thing and said, okay, here you go. And it doesn't provide details of other of the identified threats and vulnerabilities because mm-hmm. it doesn't say, you know, hey, we've looked for this particular threat and this is how things could happen. And so you've got to look at this and an impact and likelihood analysis and a risk rating is not something that you can easily let the computer figure out. You know, we have people sit down and think about this in their own environment. You know, how likely is this to happen to you? Here in Georgia, we say it's okay to accept the risk of an earthquake. (laughs) (laughs) Maybe not so much a tornado. So it continues, though. We're not even done with risk analysis. Upload documentation of the current risk analysis and the most recently conducted prior risk analysis. Hmm. Upload yeah. documentation of current risk analysis results. Huh. Okay. <laughs> huh. And then here's a sweet little thing. If there is no prior risk analysis or other record, obtain and review the two most recent written updates to the risk analysis or other record, if any, if the original written risk analysis or other records have not been updated since they were originally conducted and or drafted, obtain and review an explanation as to the reason why. Mm. So you you know that's the part where you you can't just ignore it. And I mean, what, what... you and I can provide this stuff, and many of our clients can. We have clients who, who still won't do some of this stuff, even if we're telling them to do it, and we both know it. Mm-hmm. But what can we do? Provide a reason, <laughs> explanation why. Yeah. I mean, you, maybe, maybe that's what we should do. We should start saying, okay, I need, if you're not going to do it, I need a written explanation as to why you're not going to do it. Hey, you know what? I think that's a great idea. I think that's a great idea. And, and so all of you people who come to us and say, hey, we can't get resources or money allocated. And we have people who say, I want your services, but no one will allow me to pay you. And I say, <laughs> I can't work for free. I would love to, but I can't. And, you know, I'm, I'm accustomed to a house and... and the finer things in life. like You're so greedy. I know, really? <laughs> Maybe that should be the platform of one of the candidates. <laughs> I know. I like to have a house, or, or just a roof. It's not a lean-to. And, uh, you know, it's just the finer things in life. And, and you and I both know the finer things in life, and I am, I am not that good at, okay, well, maybe bourbon and wine and those kind of things. But <laughs> uh, at any rate, the thing that that concept of if you can't get the resources allocated then go ahead and write it up and you know you're going to have links to all of this we can give you this documentation and you go in and you say i need you because it will require all of this does require the signature of the people in charge to say this is thorough and accurate it's going to happen so go ahead and do it tell them look I, i have to do this anyway so we need to do it now And then we just update it with the same reasoning for all of the things under HIPAA that we're not doing and make them sign it. What do you think? I think it's a good idea. I I think, yeah, well, you always do because it was your idea. (laughs) (laughs) So, David, since it was your idea, what's it going to say? What would you say in that note as to why? and, and, And I mean, seriously, not some of the things that we would like to say because we think it's funny. Because there's a lot that we could do there. <laughs> but what would you try to say in that note if you were one of those people who knew you were going to need to write this? What would you say in it? Uh, I'm not sure, but I would say, <laughs> I would try to make it as 
colorful language as I could to basically said, I'm sorry, but I just don't have it. I was huh? not given the resources. But I mean, either, either way, it's not going to be, I mean, it's an excuse, really. Yeah, that's what that's they what say. You have to write down what your excuse is. Yeah. I mean, it's just an excuse. It's not a reason. It's an excuse. Yeah. And I think that's what it's going to, you know, it's just going to point out that they're going to look at you, I think, look at it and then say, ah, uh, okay, this ain't going to fly. <laughs> well, you know, a lot of them will say, well, we have limited resources and we choose not to invest in this. I mean, that's mm-hmm. it. That That's what it should say. Because that's the decision they're making. Right. We have limited resources and we choose not to invest in third-party assistance or hiring additional individuals because we feel like this uh, should be handled or is shouldn't be required of us or whatever. Get them to state that. When you have that doctor's meeting or board meeting and say, we've got to do one of two things. I don't have the resources to do it myself. So, it, and, and if it's your decision, it's your business, let's, if you don't want to do it, but we have to write it down because if they ask us, we're not going to have time to make it up. So we have to write down what our answer is going to be if they ask us as to why we don't have this. So let's just go ahead and do it. I would be curious to see <laughs> what would happen if you did that. It may change some minds. I, you know, I, it would be a tough thing, you know. So, uh, all right, somebody try it <laughs> and let us know, and then let us know how it goes. I'm mean, really eager. We we will interview you or whatnot, uh, or you can give us an anonymous. We'll change our voice and take. Uh, uh, but uh, <laughs> dark overlord. <laughs> um, but I am I'm I'm interested to see because it's an approach we've never tried, but it it is it, it it's not one we're just trying to be a horse's batuti. <laughs> no, I mean it's, it's legitimate. It's it not is. like it's a real uh, thing to do. Yeah, I mean even coming from the IT side of things, it, it's probably not a bad practice to do anyway. I mean we we almost joke within the IT world about. Telling a client that they need to do X, Y, Z, and they're going, no, we're not going to do that. We talk about, well, we're going to make you sign something that says we told you, and you refuse to do it. Um, few people really follow through with that because, like you said, it kind of rubs people the wrong way. <laughs> but mm-hmm. coming from the position of we've got to document it one way or the other. Mm-hmm. So let's, you know, I'm not saying this good or bad. I'm just saying we got to document it. So if you decide we're not going to do it, then we're just going to document why we're not going to do it. So we'll have that information. Well, yeah, I, I, I would think that as, um, you know, my uh, cyber coverage insurance, my E&O insurance would appreciate that I've done that as an IT provider. Yeah, yep. But I, I think coming from that that position, I believe that would, um, I think it would be taken better because you're not trying to, you know, boss somebody around. But at the same time, I think it would cause the powers that be and make the decisions to sit back and go, well, let's let's really think about this <laughs> before yeah. we document <laughs> yeah. that we're just not going to do it. I need to write this down. You know, and, and, and it's clearly something that um, I am going to start doing. <laughs> I think it's a great idea. So that anytime we're involved with a group that says we are electing not to do the things that you are telling us are required, and we go in and say, look, my attorneys, my insurance broker, everybody recommends that we do this. And I can go call my broker up and say, what do you think about doing this? My broker would be like, I'm all over it. Do it. So would my attorney. They think it's great because we both know who's going to get blamed. Mm -hmm. The computer did it. (laughs) The computer wasn't working or we thought they were doing it. No. And if I can't prove it, I mean, I, I know plenty of times that an IT company has been put in the middle where somebody says, well, we thought you were doing it. And the IT company, like you and I, would say, uh, you know what, we tr- we tried to get you to do that, and you said no. Mm-hmm. Right. You didn't want to spend the money. You wanted to find it a cheaper way to do it. Or you're going to do it later. I don't care. Say you're going to do it next year. Just document that I've told you to do it now. Right. Yeah. You're going to be writing it up or you're going to call your attorney? I'm going to do both. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I write it up and send it to the attorney. And make it, Does this sound okay? Yeah. I think that's a great idea, David. Hey, look. 
I think it's an awesome idea. <laughs> this is this is why we started doing the podcast because we would sit around and have these conversations and come up with an idea, and then we wouldn't remember it. So we started recording. <laughs> uh, so, but it's a live brain dump. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so, but I do want to hit on a few of the uh, the facts, the FAQs uh, that they had, uh, just to make a, a few more points about what they're saying. Can we delete things we uploaded already? No. <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> Once an entity selects the review and submit button, you can't return to the system to delete and replace the previously uploaded files. And And I've had that happen where... People uh, submitted stuff to OCR, and then they started talking to us. So I, ha- I said, show me what you sent. And I would say, well, you know that this policy right here is not your current one because your current one wouldn't say it this way. It would add another thing. Oh, crap. We sent them the wrong one. Hello. Be very, very careful. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and if I uploaded documents in an incorrect area, how do I remove them? So again, you know, if if I'm filling out the privacy thing and I upload the security documents, they're saying So sorry. So sorry. <laughs> if the entity has already selected the review and submit button, you cannot go back and delete the preview. Therefore, it will need to provide an explanation in the comment section. If the <laughs> entity has not yet clicked the submit button, it can't overwrite the wrong file with a new one. Okay. They're making it clear. Be careful. Yep. There's a reason why it says review uh-huh. and submit. <laughs> yeah, and, and then it, it, you can. These questions are like one right after another here, and so these are actual questions people have asked. If and they're answering every single one of them, no matter how you ask that, we're going to answer it the same way. But then there was this one: if a practice sends or uploads the wrong information, will you go back to the practice to clarify what you were looking for? I can answer that one for you. No. <laughs> <laughs> we will rely only on the submitted documentation. So, yeah. You know, you can't guess at this stuff and just give them whatever you've got. They're just saying. throw everything and see what sticks, and they'll come back to you with what they need afterwards. <laughs> you know, honestly, it's like it's the same way they, you know, I have, I've had people do that to me where you ask for something, they just hand you this big book and say, here. Yeah. Well, that's not what I'm asking for. I'm sure what I need is in there, but. I, you know, you need to provide me with what I'm asking for, not all this other mess. <laughs> yeah, I always love that when we we would write interfaces and we would say, okay, we're trying to interface this one lab piece. And the other company would say, well, we do HL7. Okay, look, then what parts are you looking for? And they would say HL7. Yeah, it's like <laughs> it's like a, if you printed it all, it's like eight or 900 page manual that covers all these things. Hello? Let's narrow it down just a tish. Doesn't answer my question. So it's the same thing. And then here was a good one. <laughs> Can policies that have been in process for three plus months be included even though they have not yet cleared the final approval step? I'm guessing that would be no. <laughs> well, you know, there it's kind of interesting. Where entities are asked to provide documentation for a specified time period whether it's current, previous calendar year, or six years ago, they should submit documentation that reflects what is in place and in use in the time frame specified. That's just a long way of saying no. I know. <laughs> <laughs> You're supposed to do what it asks you to do. So all those people, and, and there you go. Here's a policy and procedure. We can't get it cleared just for no apparent reason. We can't get it cleared and get it finalized. So it wasn't. In, not in place. Not, it wasn't in place. And, you, you know, you can put it in place and then immediately put it in review. <laughs> there you go. You know, if this is your problem. <laughs> and then it said, can we get the list of the other entities selected? And I'm not quite sure <laughs> why you do that. Like, are you going to, like, gang up on them? Uh, you know. Are you going to collaborate? Yeah. <laughs> can, you, uh, can you share with me what you've got? Can you give me yours? Uh, so I just. I, I look over your shoulder. Yeah. That's What's it? the answer to number three? What did you say? What did you say? Yeah. <laughs> what did you say on number four? <laughs> yeah, I, 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 but somebody asked it, so I'm, I'm really curious as to what they were after, whether it was just, you know, somebody to commiserate with. And then, you know, we talked about the five things, right? Um, so what was the answer to that? No. <laughs> just no. I mean, just no. no. No long, drawn out, just, just no. No. <laughs> Which you know, lawyers to just say no, it's it's 
it's like, are you crazy? <laughs> so, so then we talked about the five things, your first five right to access and the most recent five right to access in the documentation. Well, they do the same thing when it comes to breach notification. They say, give us the five. I need to see five where you've notified somebody of a breach. Now. I hope you hadn't had five. <laughs> well, no, they're saying at some point, you know, there's a lot of times where somebody sees something that they shouldn't and you have to notify people mm -hmm. and they want documentation of it. And so this was the question. It, we had five HIPAA incidents assumed breaches in 2015. However, if we determined after an analysis that notification was not required for all those breaches, would you like us to provide a notification from 2014? Okay. okay, fair enough. So somebody's not saying, you know, I, I didn't do it. So they're asking for five notifications in 2015. We didn't have that many. And so are we free to go? <laughs> 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 and it's like, uh, the answer is, if you do not have sufficient then to meet the request, then add incidents to previous years until you reach five. Hmm, so you just can't say, here's the two we had. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Yeah, these are the only two times we've ever done it. So the thing is, though, remember, if you can't provide something, then you have to give detailed explanations as to why you don't have it. Now, what if it's determined to not be a breach? Are they wanting, does that count as well, incidents that's what, too? Yeah, that's what that question was saying is we didn't do a notification because right. in our analysis, we decided it didn't require it. So well, I just thought that might have been a you know less than 500 deal. No, where the notification no. wasn't required. No, they just say that their analysis says, so we had five incidents, but we didn't do notifications. And they're saying, we'll go back until you come up with five notifications. <laughs> Make them up if you have to. <laughs> <laughs> what had happened was, uh, yeah. And they did say, you can give them up to a 10 meg file. So don't try to say, oh, our stuff's too big. Because 10 meg is a pretty big file. Yeah, for, for text. Yeah. Better learn how to zip. <laughs> well, you know, they even want a picture of your notice of privacy practices hanging on the wall. So what you going to do about that? But um, anyway, those are all very interesting things. And uh, I think it should make it clear that uh, homie ain't playing. <laughs> it's, yeah. It's and not it's, something that uh, you're going to be able to just skate by with. Yeah. And we, we've mentioned this, I don't know how many times, but. You, you know, start now, <laughs> do something and move toward what your your goal is. Uh, you know, we we had the whole podcast a while back about, you know, doing this thing piece by piece, a little bit at a time. Uh, and, you know, you get caught in one of these notifications. Like you said, you don't have a lot of time. What was that you said? Ten business days? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you don't so, have that. This, this, uh, Webinar was on the 13th, and everybody had to be done with their documentation by, I think, like the 22nd. Yeah, that's. I mean, it's just not going to happen. If you haven't started or you don't have everything you need, it's going to be tough to get this done, mm -hmm. if, if 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 even possible at all. Yeah. Um, and so, and I would hate I hate for everything you upload to be say we didn't have time, we didn't have the money, we didn't have resources. Hippa <laughs> schmippa just uploaded. <laughs> but yeah, it's it's a we have filed bankruptcy. We are no longer here. <laughs> <laughs> Once we received your letter, we've gone out of business. <laughs> um, but uh, you know, needless to say, there's plenty of people that may be in this audit selection that are struggling, and I I feel sorry for them, and as, as should all the rest of you. But at the same time. We've often said it's better to learn from others' mistakes than your own. Mm -hmm. So we can't. We we clearly cannot get a list of the entities. <laughs> no, maybe it's for marketing purposes. <laughs> <laughs> you need my help. I know you do. You I've go. seen the list. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but if I, you know, David's idea of let's go ahead and do the documentation as to why we don't have it. Just mm -hmm. go ahead and do it. And it, it worst case is you've at least got something documented to cover you if you're not here because they could blame you for not doing it, you know, two years from now after you're no longer working there. So get that documentation done. 
and and again presented in a manner of we got to document one way or another. Mm-hmm. And if this is our decision, that's fine. But we've got to document that that's our decision. So that, it's an interesting uh, concept. Please, somebody do it and then tell us how it went. <laughs> yeah. Any anybody going through these uh, desk audits? Uh, give us a call. <laughs> I know. We will love to interview you. <laughs> we'll do it anonymously. Yeah. So yeah. yeah, we need to find one of those little voice changers we could do. That would be cool. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> oh, yeah. We don't have to worry about like you know putting you in the dark because you can't see us anyway. <laughs> yeah, but it would give us an excuse to get a new toy. So come on in. <laughs> it would. That's for sure. Mm. All right. So that's our episode for today. And uh, you know, it seems like we've had a few scary ones here lately. Mm. So, <laughs> mm-hmm. but um, it's good information though. It gives you something to uh, look at, digest figure out a plan. So it's still good. Even though some of the stuff is kind of like, Oh gosh, <laughs> yeah. I don't want to have to do this. Oh, but anyway, head on over to iTunes, rate this show. If you enjoyed it, give us a five star review. We much appreciate it. You can also share this out on your favorite social media platform. Visit us on the web at help me with HIPAA.com. If you got a question or comment, doesn't matter. You can also feature that right there on our front page. We can, uh, you can record it. We might even, Use it in a future future podcast. <laughs> Anything else, Donna, before my tongue gets any more tired? <laughs> <laughs> she sells seashells by the seashore. <laughs> Go ahead, David, do it. <laughs> too much coffee, too much coffee. Right, okay. <laughs> <laughs> oh, anyway, for Donna and myself, remember, HIPAA's not about freaking out. It's about patient care. <laughs> You've been listening to the Help Me With HIPAA podcast, hosted by Donna Grendel and David Sims, the show created to help you with HIPAA. For more information or to ask us a question, visit our website at helpmewithhipaa.com. Neither Donna Grendel or David Sims are attorneys, and they do not offer binding legal advice concerning regulatory compliance. The information in this podcast should not be relied upon or construed as legal advice in any way. Consult your attorney for legal advice concerning compliance with HIPAA regulations.